to unravel. For every, every inch of hate you stitch today about another people, you will have to unstitch it sometime. For every year you spend stitching that hate, you're going to spend a year unstitching it. Right? Which is, for me, the great tragedy of the least. You've lost two years for every year that this thing doesn't get solved. Right? Because it's embedded in people's identities and narratives. So, our role in that, a public policy role, and the role that the interview court is playing more and more prominently, is to articulate a different narrative of how religious, diverse communities interact with each other, and to do that in countries all over the world. So we've been asked by the State Department and recently the UN to, to travel to Indonesia, the Philippines. My colleague Janan was recently in India. Uh, we were in the Middle East you know, on, on occasion to give these presentations, to do these trainings, to build these leadership networks of young interfaith workers. So those are at least two public policy dimensions. But I have to say, you know, when I talk about the promise of Obama and uh, the possibility of now, and we're making that concrete. You know, I'm, I'm going to be in D.C. three times in the next six weeks, getting in front of people and saying exactly to them what I told you, which is to say, you know, we need to move on this domestically for the, the reasons of a strong civic, civil society, and we need to move on this internationally for the reasons of providing alternatives to the clash of civilizations framework. Mm -hmm. So let's hope it works. Mm -hmm. One or two more questions, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yes. When did it begin? I didn't hear what you said. When did it begin? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so June of 1998 was the first, was the conference where the kind of Eureka moment was, and it was here. It was at Stanford, which is where I was yesterday, actually. Uh, and Paul was there, and Rita was there, and, there, and Sarah was there, and they're literally like three of our first ten, not just supporters, but fellow travelers. Um, so then it's very, it's very powerful to come back here and be with them again. Um, I personally spent three and a half or four years working with folks like Sarah on the kind of initial architecture of the Intervidio Corps, and then in 2002, when I finished graduate school, I had a conversation with my father, which went something like this. So which universities are you applying to jobs for? You know, PhD from Oxford. This is the great Indian immigrant's dream. Right? I'm like, well, I, you know, I, this Interfaith Youth Corps thing that I've been telling you about, my dad's like, oh, you mean the thing that, that made you not finish your doctorate earlier? I'm like, oh, yeah, that. I'm like, I think I'm going to try to build this. My dad's like, we moved from India, so you can start an NGO. And I'm like, just stay in India for that, you know? So, but that's, in 2002 is when myself and a handful of others kind of took the lead and made this our full-time work. Uh, made it our full-time work before there were salaries. And, you know, alhamdulillah, it's just, it's grown and we get paid most of the time, which is good. And we, we're now a staff of 27 people. We've been doing this on, we do this on six continents. If you put a, a map of the world on the wall and you throw five darts, we could be in any one or all five of those places. Kind of a complicated question, but it's all, I, I really love the message of the court, but it, we have, it's obvious we have to focus on positive things that bring people together because there's obviously a violent part to many religions and it's causing conflict. So how do we help people kind of dismiss that idea? Because it could be a very large core part of that person's identity as a religious person. So how do we help them focus on the positive commonalities and similarities between the various right. differences? Because, I mean, even your secular humanist can be the most secular of everyone and want to tear apart every religion that comes there to their door. Right, or other secular people as, you know, as, as the bloody history of the 20th century was secular totalitarian movements which created tens of millions of dead. I think that's a, that, that is, in some ways, the central question. And I think that the first thing that one, that I think we recognize exactly what you said, and, and this is, this exists in different religions, it exists in every tradition, right? Uh, one of my favorite lines about this when it comes to America is Richard Rodriguez's line about, about Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, that Democrat, was a slaveholder. Thomas Jefferson, that slaveholder, was a Democrat. Okay, so now what you've established is that Thomas and Jefferson is both. And so you have a choice. Which one do you make real in the future? Okay. So that's the question that we put to young people. 
and a lot, everybody really is, is Islam has done many things on earth. There are people who, who say that they're Muslim, who destroy, destroy beauty and destroy people. And there are people who say they're Muslim who build powerful civilizations. So what are you going to do? And part of what we say is, we don't, this is not neutral terrain. And I think that that's, in my view, the, the urgency of this. Is that there are people who think Christianity means destruction, who are not shy. They're destroyed. And so the question becomes, are there people who think Christianity means driving beauty and pluralism, are they not going to be shy? Are they going to play big? Are they going to dream large? You know what I mean? And the same thing with, with Islam and Hinduism. And, I mean, there's a, a hundred great lines about this. Uh, who's, the, who's the poet I'm thinking of who said that? Uh, the best lack all conviction. Yes. Yeah, what's the rest of the line? Uh, passion and intensity. <laughs> right, it's something like uh, the best lack all conviction. And it's the worst who are the ones who who have the passion and intensity, right? I mean, I think if I had, if one of the roles that I would like to believe that the interfaith movement plays is to whisper in people's ear, God did not intend for you to play small with your big dreams. That we were made to be his servant and representative upon the earth, to move creation in line with the intention of the creator. And the intention of the creator is that people from diverse backgrounds live in equal dignity Let's get busy. Thank you.